as we climb up the mountain there is decrease in the amount of oxygen that can cause issues like shortness of breath so what we just read is seen as a everyday example in people who have breathing issues or people who are old right so why does this happen this is all because of the concentration of air molecules in the lower regions of the atmosphere and there is lesser molecules on the upper layers of the atmosphere so because most of the molecules are concentrated in the lower layers of the atmosphere the amount of oxygen is more in the lower layers than on the upper layers and that is why as we go higher up the altitude the amount of oxygen decreases and there's a problem of shortness of breath so so now why does this happen why are there more air molecules on the lower levels and less air molecule on the upper layers of the atmosphere it is simply because of the gravitational pull of the earth the gravity of the earth tends to pull down the molecules of the air in the lower regions making it very very concentrated that is why the amount of oxygen is more on the lower levels so far we have learned that there are many factors that influence weather we have learned how temperature cloud cover precipitation and humidity affects or influences weather similarly there's another very important factor that influences weather and that is the atmospheric pressure so far we have been talking about the concentration of air molecules in the lower layers and that the amount of oxygen is more on the lower layers than on higher altitudes but then why are we talking about this when we are going to talk about atmospheric pressure it is all connected so what exactly is the atmospheric pressure now since the concentration of air molecules is more on the lower layers the amount of weight that it puts on an unit area of the earth's surface is more on the lower altitudes than on the higher altitudes so for example you are on land so the atmospheric pressure is nothing but the weight of the air on that unit area of the earth surface where you are standing so the place you are standing you experience a certain amount of atmospheric pressure however as you go up higher in mountains or hills the amount of weight of that air on you tends to decrease so the pressure on you is much less on higher altitudes than on lower regions so to define atmospheric pressure we could say that the weight of the atmosphere pushing down on a unit area of the earth's surface is called the atmospheric pressure this only means that the weight of the molecules on the lower regions is much more than on higher altitudes so the pressure or the atmospheric pressure is higher here while it is lower on high altitudes so this is how atmospheric pressure works but now how is this connected to weather so because of the difference in the atmospheric pressure in lower regions and in higher altitudes people who have breathing issues or people who are old tend to avoid trips to higher altitudes or take a lot of precautions while planning a trip to such high altitudes so here's another example where you see that mountaineers or people who love to hike in such snowy icy mountains tend to carry huge cylinders of oxygen as we just understood that the concentration of air molecules is more on the lower layers and it is less on the upper layers so the amount of oxygen is also less and that is why in order to travel such high altitudes they carry oxygen cylinders as backup so we have been discussing since then that 
as we go up higher in the altitude the atmospheric pressure decreases so we can say that altitude has an inverse relationship with atmospheric pressure so now that the atmospheric pressure is lower in the upper regions and higher in the lower regions the concentration of air molecules is also lower or lesser in the higher altitudes and more on the lower layers of the atmosphere this only means that the oxygen level tends to decrease as we go higher up in the altitude so looking at this particular image it shows us the difference in oxygen level as we go higher up so at sea level the oxygen is 100% as we go up higher 5000 meter above the sea level the oxygen level is 84% then as we go up higher at 10000 meters it is 70% then at 15000 it is 58% in 20000 it is 48% in 25000 it is 39% and in 30000 meters above sea level it is 32% oxygen so you see that there's a huge decrease in the level of oxygen at 30000 meters above sea level right so here we understood that atmospheric pressure has an inverse relationship with altitude so now how does this work so in land where temperatures are very high the molecules tend to move away from each other the space between them increases and they become light or less dense and rise above right so it becomes a low pressure area but in regions where temperatures are very low there the spaces between the molecules decrease and they become more dense and they sink down creating a high pressure area right so this is how this works so this is how temperature is related to atmospheric pressure higher temperatures means low pressure area lower temperatures means high pressure area So now that we have understood what atmospheric pressure is let's see what is used to measure this atmospheric pressure well a barometer is used to measure the atmospheric pressure of a place so a barometer is a scientific instrument used to measure the atmospheric pressure and it is also called the barometric pressure so atmospheric pressure or barometric pressure is measured with the help of a barometer which is a scientific instrument now this barometer could be of two types mercury barometer and aneroid barometer so before moving on could you help me answer this question which of the following is used to measure atmospheric pressure is it a thermometer or is it a hygrometer or is it a barometer yes we just learned that it is a barometer that is used to measure the atmospheric pressure now so far we understood what is atmospheric pressure it is the weight of the air on a unit area of the earth's surface right and we understood that atmospheric pressure has a inverse relationship with altitude so it reduces with the increase in altitude and vice versa we also understood that atmospheric pressure is low in warm areas and it is high in cold areas we further understood that it is barometer that is a scientific instrument that is used to measure the atmospheric pressure so suppose if we divide this small region into two halves where this is a area with high pressure so the temperature here is very low so it's a cold region while this is a hot region where the temperature is very high but the pressure is very low okay so this is a cold region with low temperature and high pressure and this is a hot region with high temperature and low pressure 
So it is a tendency of the wind that is moving air to get attracted to low pressure areas or areas that are of high temperature. So what generally happens is winds move from colder regions to hotter regions or from high pressure area to low pressure area. Right? So this is very simple. But how does it affect or how does it influence weather? Well, when these winds move over water bodies that are regions with low temperature, they tend to carry moisture with them. So these moisture laden winds move from this high pressure area to the low pressure area where they condense and on meeting an obstruction, they precipitate. So we can simply say that winds bring rainfall when they move from high pressure area to low pressure area. And these are not any winds, but winds that carry moisture. So let's see how does this work. So an area C where the temperature is very low. So it's a high pressure area. So the wind from here moves to the low pressure area carrying moisture and there it condenses and on meeting an obstruction they precipitate. So this is how wind affects or influences weather. So what do you see here? You see a chicken, but is it eatable? No, this is a instrument, a wind instrument. And this is known as a wind vane. So how is it used? Well, a wind vane is used to determine the direction of the wind. It is placed in an open area to avoid obstruction by buildings or trees. So a wind vane is a wind instrument that is used to determine the direction of the wind. Well, this is another wind instrument. Now what does this do? We have wind vane to determine the direction of the wind. But what is an anemometer? Well, the instrument that measures the speed of the wind is called an anemometer. So this is an anemometer which measures the speed of the wind. So far we have learnt about all these different weather instruments. Let's take a recap. We learnt about Six's maximum and minimum thermometer that helps us record the temperature of the atmosphere. We also learnt about Stevenson screen that protects or provides a shade to the Six's maximum and minimum thermometer. Then we learnt about the rain gauge that helps us measure or record the amount of rainfall in a particular area at a particular time. We further learnt about barometer that helps us record atmospheric pressure. Then we learnt about hygrometer that measures humidity. Then we learnt about wind vane and anemometer where wind vane helps us understand the direction of the wind and anemometer helps us understand the speed of the wind. So these are the different weather instruments that helps us record and study different weather conditions. Have you ever heard of an amazing weather phenomena known as the 4 o'clock showers? Well, yes, in regions that are located on or near the equator, they have an equatorial type of climate. So those regions that are forested on the equatorial region tend to evaporate huge amount of water or moisture from the trees into the atmosphere. So because they receive direct rays of the sun, so on receiving direct rays of the sun, the evaporation rate is much faster and at a very large amount. This evaporation leads to cloud formation and these forested areas in the equatorial region tends to receive rainfall at around 4 o'clock every day. And this is known as the 4 o'clock shower. Isn't that amazing? So we just learned about that amazing weather phenomena that is the 4 o'clock showers that occurs in the equatorial region. But what if there were no trees at all? What if we cut down all the trees? Will this 4 o'clock shower still happen? No. 
there will be nothing left there will be no phenomena no amazing phenomena that we could admire so it is very sad that planting a tree has almost become mandatory deforestation has happened to such an extent that it has affected the climate of the earth as a whole the temperature of the earth has increased leading to global warming and many other human activities like the working of industries the agricultural activities where we use chemical fertilizers and pesticides all of this has led to increase in the greenhouse emission also so we see that we have led to the increase in global warming global warming in turn has had negative impact on the earth it has led to the loss of habitat in polar regions where icebergs have melted and there's no more place for this polar creatures to survive while we have also had forest fires in regions where temperatures have increased to such an extent that suddenly there was a breakout of forest fires and huge areas of land has been destroyed and there was also loss of life and property because of global warming agriculture is also being negatively impacted or affected so you see that there are places that are suffering from drought the crop cultivation is being negatively affected the production of crops is not as expected so there is shortage of food many other such things is leading to limiting of resources which may lead to poverty and wars between nations so you see that climate that affects the lifestyle of people across the world may also affect our lives both positively and negatively and it is on us that we be responsible enough and not over exploit the resources that are already so limited so you see that today in this video we have learned about atmospheric pressure as an important element of weather and also wind as an important element that influences weather we summarized or recapped all the weather instruments and then we also learned about the 4 o'clock showers we further learned that as we are dependent on climate climate too needs our help so we must be careful and very responsible on our parts Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock test get all your doubts resolved instantly learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy it is rewarding too so register for free now